Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. A while ago, I did a tutorial that was featured on Adobe's website that showed how to transform a photo into a painting inspired by Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. It used the oil paint filter that was introduced in CS6. Now, I'm going to show you how to use the same oil paint filter to transform a photo into the look of an unfinished painting, a work in progress. I'll show you how to paint around your main subject, as well as bring out specific details within your painting. Open a photo you'd like to use. This image is approximately 9 by 5 inches with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. The first step is to make a selection around your main figure or object. There are many ways to make selections and I've covered them in many of my tutorials. Choose the method that's the easiest and most effective for you. We'll save it by going to Select and Save Selection. Then click OK. We can now delete the selection since we saved it. To do this, press Ctrl D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. Make two copies of your image by pressing Ctrl or Command J twice. Go to Filter and Oil Paint. If you have an earlier version of Photoshop, you can download Pixel Bender from the Adobe site. It's similar to the oil paint filter, but the adjustments are different. For earlier versions, you can also use some of the filters in the Artistic menu. Once you've opened the oil paint filter, you can adjust the look by using different combinations for the brush and lighting. For this photo, I'll choose 5 for the stylization and 10 for cleanliness, scale, and bristle detail. For lighting, I'll choose 300 for the angular direction and 2 for the shine. Experiment with these numbers to get just the right combination for your image. I like the look of it now, however, I want to bring out more detail in some of the areas. So I'll click OK, hide the top layer, and click on the middle layer to make it active. I'll open up the oil paint filter again, and this time I'll choose a lower amount for stylization and cleanliness. I'll keep the other parameters the same. Notice those areas now have more detail. To restore the first painting while retaining the details of the specific areas of this painting, make the top layer visible and active, and click on the layer mask button to make a layer mask next to the top layer. Make sure your foreground and background colors are black and white respectively. If they are not, press D on your keyboard. If black and white are inverted, press X. Open your brush tool and make the hardness 0 and the size approximately 75 pixels. Now brush over the areas you'd like to see more detail. If you want to increase or decrease your brush size, press the right or left bracket keys. Essentially, we're brushing away areas of the layer mask to reveal the detail painting underneath. Let's merge these layers by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Make a copy of it and open your channels panel. Control click or command click on the shape you made a selection of earlier. This will bring back its selection. Open your layers panel and make a layer mask of the selection next to the top layer. Make the middle layer active and make a layer mask next to it. Control click or command click on the new layer button to make a new layer below the active layer. We'll fill it with white and since white is our background color, press Control or Command plus Delete. Open the canvas texture I provided. Its link is in the video's description or project files. To get it into your painting, press Control or Command A to select it, and Control or Command C to copy it. Open your painting file, and press Control or Command V to paste the canvas texture into it. Drag the canvas to the top. 
If the size is too large or too small, open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner and when you see a straight double arrow, press and hold Shift and Alt or Shift and Option as you drag it in or out. When it fits well, press Enter or Return. Change the blend mode to multiply. If you want to increase the color vibrancy of your image, click on the adjustment layer button and choose vibrance. For this image, I'll increase it to plus 40. We're ready to make the painting look like it's unfinished. Click on the layer mask below the one with the main subject's shape. We need to invert the colors. You can either press the small double box icon or press the letter X. Click on the arrow next to the brush size and then the gear icon to open your list of brush presets. Choose thick heavy brushes and click OK so we can just see this set in the thumbnail window. I'll pick the last one. Press F5 to open your brush tip window. If your shape dynamics is checked, uncheck it and then close the window. I'll make the brush size smaller and brush over the areas of the painting I want to remove. It looks more effective to partially brush around some structures as well as the main subject. Brush around the edges of the canvas as well to give it that unfinished look. To add areas of the painting back, press X and brush over those areas. I'll press Ctrl or Command Z to undo the last step. Let's give the canvas a subtle highlight and shadow at the edges to make it look like it's stretched around a frame. Double click on the canvas thumbnail to open its layer styles. Click on Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel. The technique is Smooth. The depth is 100%. The direction is Up and the size is 5 pixels. Make the highlight opacity 50% and uncheck global light. Then click OK. Notice we have a subtle effect around the edges of the canvas to give it some dimension. If you want to make your painting brighter, click on the thumbnail below the canvas, click on the adjustment layer button, and open brightness and contrast. I'll slide the brightness to 37 and the contrast to 15. Experiment with these numbers to get just the right amounts for your painting. Using these techniques you can transform any photo into paintings that are works in progress. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.